Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph. Our she new into October 18th, 2024. Uh, we have a wonderful weekend, a lot of stuff going on here as well. The last couple days, uh, school has been out here in the city of Missoula for uh, teacher extra work and all that kind of stuff. But some good news coming out of the Missoula Public Library as it picks up yet another award. This is, was the Green uh, Library Award from the International Federation of Library Associations. Um, and institutions due to the efforts in creating a sustainable building. The HVAC system floor resulting in a 30% energy savings compared to overhead HVAC systems. Their solar panels which were installed at the early stages of the opening of the new library covered 10% of the electricity cost with 20% around the summer solstice. In the winter, the natural sunlight keeps the, heat, the, the building heated and the building is also at a 20 degree tilt to eke out as much sunlight as possible throughout the day. This building warms itself in the winter with its large windows. So, well, we didn't get a chance to have some city council because of the federal holiday Indigenous Peoples Day here on Monday. We got some updates on the storm cleanup as Mayor Andrea Davis met with all the tree experts and all the people of the urban tree department, uh, disaster relief folks, as they address the damages of the current tree removal as many of the trees uh, post storm are still damaged and they were able to get a lot of stuff done and this is Andrea Davis giving a little bit more about this. This is uh, an opportunity to extend a huge thank you, first and foremost, to the residents of our community. The members of the public have been incredible partners in this. People stepped up and immediately helped their neighbors, immediately helped strangers in the community, and con continue to do so. You're going to hear from the professionals today around the extent of the ongoing storm response and work that we're doing on our urban forest. And the citizens and residents, the residents of this community, continue you to help us and I wanted to thank the public for that and thank them not only for the work that's already been done but the continued partnership with the public to help be responsive on the amount of tree storm damage that we are managing mm -hmm. so there's there's definitely quite oh that's my microphone for a second there I was like what's going on here okay so oh geez hold on oh wow I I'm definitely going to have to get a new mic during the break. Uh, but anyways, the cleanup effort continued and the urban forest and parks department were in attendance with the estimated 75,000 cubic yards of debris and 30,000 public trees that have been inspected. Uh, the next phase in November will to be addressed over the 6,000 trees that will be targeted through these cleanup efforts. So uh, Mayor talks more on this and some of the efforts. For most of the general public, we might think the storm is over, but it is not. And we're going to be in this for the next several months in terms of addressing this safety hazards that are out there. And, um, and we really appreciate everybody's patience and partnership in this. Public safety is our absolute top priority in this initiative. Every decision we make is guided by the need to protect residents and their property. The scope of this work is unprecedented for our urban forestry team. Crews will be working systematically from street to street throughout the city. Our work may require that you temporarily have to move your vehicle and may create some noise disturbances. We appreciate uh, the public's patient and patience and cooperation during this process. You're going to see large teams of large equipment moving through neighborhoods, handling this work. And normally when we would do an operation like something similar, <laughs> or maybe even something uh, not similar, we've never done anything like this, we would have the opportunity to actually connect with members of the public. We aren't gonna be able to do that. And so this press conference and this news coverage helps us get the message out there because we're gonna have to just systematically move through the community in order to stay on schedule before the deep winter hits us. Okay. And so this is going to be a fairly long process. Um, nothing could be worse than yet another storm or of equal or lesser value pushing these trees that stood during ta tall during the July storm for various reasons from a post-storm damage. This is very concerning if you want to have picnics under trees, let alone the weight from the snow that could cause branches to break. The FEMA support will cover 75% of the costs in relief. Adrian Beck, Director of Emergency Management, spoke on these efforts further. 
uh, under the Stafford Act that FEMA public assistance, that name is a little disingenuous, right, in that it, it really is not intended for the public as far as individuals be re receiving financial assistance from FEMA, but it is designed to assist local governments in, in doing the work that we need to do to ensure uh, public health and safety, as well as address um, the, the, the fallout as far as the debris that remained. So after August 23rd, we knew that we had that declaration. Um, we were always operating. Uh, it didn't change the way that we operate. It doesn't change the pace and scale with which we operate, but it, it allows us to then be very diligent and um, uh, a little bit pedantic about how we document things. Because at the back end of this, this is a reimbursement program. Public assistance through FEMA is a reimbursement program. Uh, oftentimes, I think people have an assumption that FEMA shows up and, and just gives you a checkbook and says, here you go, you have you have the checkbook to the federal uh, treasury. It's not the way it works. We, we have to we have to spend the money. We have to then document how we've spent the money to ensure that it's eligible within the public assistance grant program. They do call it a grant program because it is reimbursement. All right. And so there's Adrian Beck giving a little bit of the uh, history and some of the reflection of how uh, the city of Missoula is going to recoup the costs for the damage through FEMA. Guidelines, grants, and many of those other things. Yep, <coughs> you know, part of getting grants in the first place is you got to put your money where your mouth is. And so far, they don't know for sure how much this will cost, but the city will have to spend 25% of the overall costs of this. Uh, besides all the money that and the people behind the administrative roles, we also have Morgan Valiant, who's spoken from various initiatives involving open space and public trails. Um, this is him talking about the uh, showing slides and their data from the damage of the trees here in Missoula. Very early on in uh, response, um, we had folks going out into neighborhoods to look for hazards. And debris and hazards are the, the first thing we were looking for, like trees that were actively failing or on someone's car or blocking a roadway. Um, and then that effort really transitioned to and was largely volunteer driven. And so another shout out to all the great citizens that we have here in Missoula that, that stepped up to walk block by block throughout the entire city limits to look for hangers where hangers are just dead hanging limbs that are waiting to fall in the next windstorm. It could cause further damage or trees that were so impacted or so damaged that they needed to be removed. Okay, and so that was the uh, reflection on some of that stuff. The purple dots indicated in the map were hanging limbs and the green dots meaning the trees will have to be removed. Through the many resources, Morgan had 20 to 30 people going block by block for, the, for six weeks to bring this data to you. 5,800 uh, 5, trees are currently tagged for cleanup with 600 being removed overall. Uh, also, 91 trees are in parks with over 415 aerial hazards, according to Morgan Valiant. He also talks about the importance of the trees in the uh, Missoula area. I'd be negligent if I didn't say, and I, I just want to throw it out there, that um, we should not see trees as risks or liabilities. Trees are the number one thing that is going to keep our community resilient if, uh, as temperatures climb or as we have hot summers or as we try to reduce energy costs on adjacent buildings and homes or absorb stormwater runoff, they are incredibly important green infrastructure and are a big ticket uh, on how we're going to make our, 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 our community more resilient uh, in the future. And so um, they've got a lot of value and we're treating them as such. And the first thing that we really need to do over the uh, next 90 days is to deal with all the hazards that are out there. Yeah, and then the, the last press conference they held, some of the questions were asked like, oh, what about future trees and plantation of this? So far, most of FEMA does not cover uh, planting of fresh new trees, and they basically said that they would not be concentrated on new trees, they'd be concentrated on the old trees and the uh, hazardous trees uh, moving forward as of right now. Uh, green space is often good to have uh, built-in privacy for neighborhoods and provide a calming effect. Going into forests, the temperature uh, technically can feel like it's 10 degrees cooler just in forest alone. Urban forester Ben Carson spoke to the current status of tree removal as we move forward on this. We've already treated um, over 200 trees, uh, and by treated in this case I mean removed. Uh, the majority of those were trees that had failed onto personal property of some kind, and so we are trying to you know, open roadways, clear people's cars, 
remove trees from houses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but now we have another additional 571 that for a variety of reasons, which can range from, um, you know, complete root plate failure, like an uprooting of a tree, uh, tree toppling over to something that's far less obvious, like, um, structural integrity loss because of a vertical stem crack. Uh, you know, some of those things might not be obvious to the layperson, um, but we have had qualified individuals look at each of these trees and survey whether or not we can reasonably and um, responsibly retain them because we would like to do that in every capacity. Yeah, so yeah, they're doing their best uh, with whatever they have and through the pri uh, private public partnership with Debris Tech. Uh, as the source for the information and the uh, chart that was shown through Morgan Valiant. Reporting the trees and a map of the trees have been damaged. <coughs> Excuse me. Risk assessments and priorities for these trees are treated by a case-by-case -case scenario and cannot push the timeline for removal as resources are being used, if not uh, for any, if not all, arborists in and around the western Montana region for this. By the time I report this, the website through the city of Missoula should be ready to go to uh, uh, let me see again that number that uh, uh, that website for trees and uh, active maps is through debris tech and you can go through the city's website on that for more information um, as it progresses um, but anyways uh, Marie de Charmy for the urban forest tree specialist talks uh, types of trees that were most vulnerable to this particular event during the Q&A section of this uh, um, special uh, update. Typically we do see uh, failures by species profile, so the classic one being blue spruce, uh, and we did see many of those fail, but it really was everything except the trees that were already standing dead because they had no canopy. So the trees with the biggest canopy got hit the hardest. So, you know, we saw from Norway maple, sugar maple, blue spruce, we had one white fir we had one in the entire urban forest and it went <laughs> so i mean there there was n no way to predict you know what species would fail in this one yeah so some trees were more unlucky than others uh mayor davis talks about the future and trees especially when it comes to uh climate and keeping the uh, uh city a little bit cooler by having more trees we do recognize just how much trees not only offer a quality of, of life uh, for our residents, it's, it really is a key focal point for our strategic plan in the sense that we are focusing on ways to reduce the urban heat uh, effect. And, and obviously we realize that this has impact and so we'll continue to stay in close contact with members of the public around how we may be um, continuing to further that, that goal. Uh, I will say that I was really happy that city council passed uh, um, one of the requests that, that Parks had, which was to add to our urban forestry team. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of requests we could not make happen, and it's certainly a priority of mine to make sure that we're paying attention to Missoula's urban forest, um, recognizing the many benefits that we get, and the timing of that was really good. All right, and so that was um, all my clips for the city council. Uh, budget season was towards the end of August, where many of the departments set their budget for fiscal year 2025. And this just so happens to fall on those lines with the bonus FEMA relief, courtesy of Go uh, Governor Greg Gianforte's declaration of disaster uh, to release some of the FEMA dollars along with the state grants to help additional costs at the 25% match by the city. Overall, this will take time and efforts through the many departments assuring the public that the trees that pose a risk have been marked and it will be removed and uh, pr uh, proper, uh, properly listed through the online database known as Debris Tech. So I have a promo for you guys and I'm gonna switch out these mics because I'm having some technical difficulties with some static. So I'm gonna throw it over to some of the uh, fun videos that the kids have made over the summer and when I come back, we're gonna talk about some movies. What do you call someone who's nearly deaf? What? Deaf-defying. Dad joke wizard! Boy, I wish there were girl toys. Well, well, now there is. Yeah! You will never get away with being an inferior toy. Mine is doing its taxes. Mine is arguing with his wife. Just like mom and dad. Do not listen to them. They 
light of further controls. You are safe in our hands. Dude, I just love my VR headset. Oh yeah, I love it. I got all the new models. They're great. Yeah, oh my god. My parents just got me the new model. Like, the Apple Vision Pros, bro. I can actually, like, oh my god, bro. They're so good. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, which model do you have? You've never told us. I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> you're being, are you being serious? Hey guys, we are back, and hopefully the audio is a little bit better for you guys out there. Uh, we're going to jump right into some pre-critic, where I pre-judge a movie based on absolutely nothing but my pre-biases towards movies. I'm a bit of a cinephile myself, but I prefer to uh, uh, kind of hate watch most movies these days just because I'm old and cynical. Let's kick things off. We're kicking things off as we live in time. This is our time for a romance about two people who, through the course of a long time, they will... Won't they, will they, won't they eventually get back to get together? So many times may, they meet up, date, break up, bitter friends, close friends, and become a relationship they were supposed to have. What happens to the reality of the relationship that starts off great and one bad thing causes a major rift and most people uh, cave? 
Well, some soldiers do relationships, good or bad, and instead of working on their relationship, they explore, they explode, or they bring kids into it, but enjoy another one of those movies that give unrealistic, uh, unrealistic expectations for a romance movie, and perhaps one of them has cancer. Um, <coughs> that's, that's modern romance movies for you. Uh, Smile 2, from a sequel of a film where um, you go crazy, you see uh, horrific images of people smiling because nothing is more unhin un unhinged than people who just smile at you and nothing else. Uh, welcome to the sequel of a film that makes you think, if smiling and laughing are contagious, why not make a movie about how creepy smiling is? This movie continues the terrifying journey of the smiling people who end up in, uh, unaliving themselves because they see too many smiling faces. Anyways, this movie is basically about a pop star who uh, gets cursed while she's performing, and she starts seeing everyone smile around her, and it's also uh, kind of like a, uh, a jab at like Taylor Swift or whatever. So anyways, those are the movies that are, that's that movie. Then we got another movie called Rumors. Uh, so they, you know it's a British by the use of the U in the American print that drops the U in most places. So you have Rumors, uh, watch a revenge uh, serial flick, uh, revenge survival flick, so as in like the characters in the movie are just insufferable people. In this case, they're bumbling world leaders in a retreat from hell. They're stuck there, and they have to find a way out, uh, relying on their wits, which aren't very much since they're all world leaders. Boop -boop -boop but anyways, they're portrayed as like Dick Van Dyke type tropes of bumbling foolishness who kind of fail upwards. Mostly like they do a bunch of uh, drugs and go tribal on each other until one of the world leaders, bright-eyed and hopeful, survives in the end to save the world from climate change or whatever. I don't know. I didn't really pay attention to the trailer. But anyways, Roblox the movie, hey, let's rip off Legos because you literally have uh, Chris Pratt in the middle right there, but marketed to kids uh, who, like the, who like Minecraft but like being told what to do and to use real currency to buy certain skins to show off their wealth in an online 8 to 14-year-old online adventure sandbox where anything goes. Even the age, it could be all sorts of people who play this game. It's weird. It's weird. It's online. Uh, it's one of the most modern retellings of uh, Lord of the Flies. But ignore all that and get a shameless cash grab for a movie that spent no time or money on making this movie for you to ignore and bring your kids to this movie to basically be like, "Hey, you guys like Roblox? Why not watch the Roblox movie?" And they're just like, "Why? I'd rather play Roblox." Anyways, we also finally have a uh, international uh, horror film, uh, Rippy. Uh, good day, mates. We have an angry kangaroo looking to drown some people and pets in this original story about a rabid marsupial on the Jaws in the Bush World Adventures. This story follows a young Spitfire cop on her journey to make her uh, dead father proud. John Connor's dad stars in this film as he continues his D-list movie adventures throughout his long tenure as an actor. Enjoy your typical trope of animal attacks that seem random only to become more than the sheriff can handle type of film with plenty of plucky characters to slow into the slaughter. So Rippy, uh, basically a demonic kangaroo because, uh, you know, the, once you find an animal, you're just like, well, let's make a horror movie out of this. Hey, they made a, a horror movie out of a sloth who is basically a mean girl and took revenge on a sorority or something for some reason. So anyways, those are the movies that are coming up this weekend. And I have a new dub and stuff for you guys from the 1960 version of Little Shop of Horrors, which at this point feels just as long as the Rick Moranis version. But this is the OG original version, which was roughly about an hour and 15 minutes long and is free on YouTube for anyone to enjoy. So here is Little Shop of Horrors. Well, I hate to be that guy, but we might have to close up shop here and one of you has to be let go. Well, I wonder who it is. Mr. Floral, I promise I'll do good. What makes you think I'm going to fire you over this beautiful young lady? Relax, Sizemore. I got your back. Oh, gee, thanks, Dad. I mean, fl floral. You know, I always thought of you as a son. And today, you can sow your oats. That doesn't sound that great. Well, I have to agree with Aubrey. Nonsense, me boy! This flower shop could be yours! If you play your cards right, we could open many stores just like this. Failing businesses left and right. And I can put your name all over it. And then I will collect the insurance money when you go bankrupt. So I'll keep the cash and you'll go down with the ship. How does that sound to you, boy? Floral and Sizemore, can you see it now? Sure, the IRS and the DOJ will call it fraud, but... I just like a man who owns a business. It's really adorable. Oh, yes. Us business owners... I'm dating a band director. Ah, yes. The most coveted, eligible bachelors around. And all I'm stuck with is a dentist. Can you believe that? Yes, you'll be rolling in band directors, each and every one of you. I swear it. My favorite movie is Whiplash. Oh, I like butting into other people's... 
conversations. Please, please help me. I, for one, really like J.K. Simmons, especially from that one show, Oz. I thought it was the other... Ma'am, will you just buy a flower and get out of here? Oh, I'm looking for tulips. Well, ma'am, we don't actually know the name of our flowers, but we can just grab some, bring it out to you. I do like being brought things. Bring me a bushel of your finest flowers. Oh, yes, I will bring it out post-haste. Well, you know what they say about flowers in a big sack. What do they say? Well, I'm not sure, but perhaps you can tell me. Uh, that the rain in Spain... I don't like falls him. mainly on the plane? You should fire him. He's terrible. I hate him. The way he wears that hat and the way he talks. It's really, really obnoxious. So please, I don't want to see him next time I come to the store. Ugh. That plant looks really weird and gross or whatever. See ya. Oh! Oh, oh no! Um, uh, it's okay. It's perfectly fine. This plant is, uh... Um, maybe the uh, plant needs the blood of the innocent. Maybe that'll feed it. There hasn't been the blood of the innocents since they raised the ban on dancing. Darn out of towners. I don't know how to dance. Why would you know how to dance? Well, I did hide out in warehouses and dance by myself. Excuse me, Aubrey. Do you know what Chapter 11 bankruptcy means for businessmen of my caliber? It means... I can restructure my business, liquidate my assets, and not lose any money from the process. Oh, I thought you liked losing money. No, no, it's not the same. Oh, no, don't give up on giving up. I can file for Chapter 11 for you. I can put the company under my name and lose my quality of life. Welcome back. Let's talk about some news things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. It's time for a little news roundup around here in the city of Missoula. On Sunday, human remains were found earlier Sunday around 4.45 p.m. in the Mullen Road in the Clark Fork River. The Missoula County Sheriff's Office and the Missoula Rural Fire Department recommended to the scene, uh, responded to the scene, and recovery efforts began as after it was determined that the remains were human, according to a latest news release. And so far, they were transported to crime lab and are currently under investigation as its own case. Um, and also, uh, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about the news as we're getting closer and closer to the election time. And uh, frankly, I'm gonna. This is more about giving you guys tips on how to avoid it. Uh, if you're tired of seeing those campaign ads over and over, over again, well, know that about 44 million dollars to the senator election isn't enough. Then what is? Uh, I did actually went for the market and actually paid for YouTube Premium to not see those ads. And frankly, if you want to avoid these kinds of ads, I would implore you to follow the same path. And once the last election is over, you can cancel, give back to you hearing those better health ads on YouTube. But Montana Free Press reported that since August 30th of this year, we've had PACs and special interest groups uh, add to the highly contested seat between John Tester and Tim Sheehy. Everything from digital ads, mailers, and print media to TV, radio, and internet advertising is represented in the total reported to the Federal Elections Commission. So roughly, I, w I understand that. I don't know uh, if you really noticed, uh, if you've checked your mail here in the city of Missoula, just in general, it feels as though there's a new uh, political ad every session uh, that a mail is delivered. Major donors from each pack show relationships centered on banking and finance with several conservative donors, from progressive donors to relationships centered on unions, cons conservation groups, and nonprofit, nonprofit so-called dark money groups that don't disclose donors. Many donors are listed available on MontanaFreePress.org, but some of them include the Conservative Caucus, the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, the Environmental Defense Fund Action Committee, and many, many, many more. Whether you vote one way or another, the amount of money that can be raised to corner these uh, Senate seats can expand the distance. Which brings me to the uh, Kamala and Trump, who, like Montana, has seen a bunch of money thrown their way with record-breaking billion-dollar campaigns that is Kamala Harris, to the deep pockets of Elon Musk, who is using his own platform, X, to highlight the conservative media and dump money into the Trump campaign with hopes for a cabinet seat that oversees the Financial Regulatory Committee. But Kamala ain't as innocent either as they try to get rid of the Lena Khan as the Federal Trade Commission, who has been a part of the antitrust suits on Google and various other mega corporation entities moving forward. So what does this have to do with a lot of different things? Well, you know, Federal Trade Commission, like with antitrust, uh, we went into Google's lawsuit at, uh, as the latest in a ways the federal government has targeted these institutions and specifically looking into Elon, 
who has a wide variety of businesses that one could easily draw lines of a monopolistic intent with all his connections to NASA and federal contracts through SpaceX would make it easier for him to chair the FCC. Um, if uh, pretty crazy times we're living in in Montana seems to be on the map for a lot of interested parties to curb elections to favor money over policies, because when that when was the last time you heard a, a political ad that spoke in detail about their future as your representative, it's all become the blustering of bullies. So okay, so back to more safe news. Uh, this is why I really hate talking about politics because I don't trust either side. They are more interested in keeping their own team happy. And you know, as we go further into this, I want to talk some more happy news. Um, as I got a uh, alumni newsletter from the University of Montana on drug development is on trail to help cancer patients. This is the first inhuman trial of the drug NEI 4001 will take place in Australia. They're going to be using human um, <coughs> test subjects. The compound will be uh, delivered via IV to patients with advanced solid tumors. Uh, the uh, INI 4001 uh, stimulated the immune system to fight cancer in previous studies using animal models. The first human trials are on ascending dose study, meaning that the dosage starts low and is slightly increased to evaluate safety and tolerability. From the University of Montana, Jay Evans, a UM researcher and uh, director of the center, has been working on with the team at the University of Montana since 2016. Uh, some background includes an attempt at the COVID vaccine and the current work on the vaccine blockers to uh, combat opioid abuse. It essentially uh, blocks the ability for people to get high, but also does not mitigate the effects of pain relief. So it's going to be an interesting compound as it moves forward with that process. But going back to this compound is a uh, collective effort of the UM Center and company Immunin uh, employs about 70 people on campus and around the river at Montech. CTM offers one of the largest university-based academic research teams for vaccine discovery and development in the United States. This was from the alumni newsletter I got this week. And since we spoke about the UM, we must throw it over to Bozeman because uh, they're our rivals. Uh, are, their mayor is trying to turn things around for the city by overturning their government as a whole. So uh, Joey Morrison, who was once living out of his car at 29, spilled onto the streets after the George Floyd protests and since then got a little bit of a bug for politics. Since then, the city of Bozeman has seen efforts to enhance affordable housing, technically competing with Missoula for the home CDBG Federal Urban Development Grant. And since 2022, M Morrison led the coalition of tenant unions in Bozeman, which uh, says 60% of residents are renters in Bozeman and beat out the previous tenured 13-year mayor, uh, Cindy Ardress, Andress, sorry, by uh, more than double the vote. The latest news resulted in the restructuring of how the government is operated in Bozeman. In the ma uh, major restructuring, every 10 years, the residents of Montana cities and counties decide whether they want to revise the city charter but this is the first time Bozeman has approved a review since 2004. And many of this overhaul is because many of the representatives on the Bozeman uh, City Commission, they don't call it a city council here like in Missoula, they don't have representatives of each district, very much like how we do here in the city of Missoula, like wards. They technically do uh, what's basically like an open election. So they fill about five seats for the city commission and it's everyone gets to vote for everyone. And that's kind of how it is. So no one person represents anything like that. So Ward 1, for example, is Rattlesnake and Northside neighborhoods, respectively. They want more members uh, for this commission to be five, seven, or more. Missoula roughly has 13,000 per ward with a plus or minus of 3% total of the city population. With the yearly review of the wards being adjustment for our city has since the new development as Ward 2 is, being, uh, is annexing more and more properties, especially towards the airport. And Missoula has total rep tw 12 total representatives with two people representing each ward. And there's crossover elections, so there's no one person who, there's, there's no two people who are not uh, brand new within the city council. And according to the Montana Free Press, the state constitution requires every municipality and county in the state to vote in a ballot measure in the fourth year of every decade to decide whether to undergo a review of their respective local governments. This doesn't happen in other states. Uh, including one law, one vote, which requires the vote on bills separately in the package. This is part of our Montana Constitution. One new thing that I uh, keep on discovering and keep on being very surprised by. Overall, this would add more seats to, Mizzou to uh, Bozeman city government and look to update the language and decide if the mayor should have more executive powers or less. Uh, Missoula mayor sets the budget and the way that meetings are scheduled, uh, but the city councilors are the ones that actually get the vote and the mayor has very little say on 
whether measures passed in the city, but can be used their powers in the deciding vote and in the end, in the end, if there is a tiebreaker vote. There is a lot to do and say in the in Bozeman or Havel busy season trying to figure out how they run their government with a very strong tenant union back in it. Bozeman basically went from a 30% of city eligible voters in the last election to getting more involved with how the city of Bozeman runs. All interested parties in this restructuring of the government includes the Republican endorsed candidates along with your tenant union endorsed candidates are expected to move forward on changes to local government with more interest on wage increases for civil service. So. Also, some more news happened this uh, earlier this week, and I wrote this story just this morning, so bear with me. More news out of the Mont Missoula Transportation Infrastructure as buses look to have an updated in the design Brooks Corridor bus lane. Part of this plans originally included a center bus lane to help traffic concerns of people transferring from I-90 to 93 Brooks as the city looks to put it on the side instead of original plans down the middle. The side lanes from buses would effectively uh, leave the bus stops available to stop and go without disrupting regular traffic. And that would have bus lanes uh, being jumped in and out of to accommodate those stops along Brooks. The concept of a center running a bus rapid transit system um, emerged nearly a decade ago as MRA and city uh, transportation officials began looking for a way to reshape Brooks Street. Um, consultants hired by the city also uh, competed a number of studies on the corridor, given an anticipated growth in and around Missoula, Brook Street would likely become non-functional without some form of change. <coughs> this is a second design concept that is making rounds in City Hall and interested in updating the road altogether. So this study is uh, got support from the se uh, Senator Danes and tes uh, Tester for nearly $900,000 with the benefit of federal funding and Montana Department of Transportation support since it covers a major highway corridor. So. There's a lot of things happening in the city of Missoula, and that's basically your rundown of some of the news that are happening in the city of Missoula as I uh, transition over into some of the events in Missoula. So let's uh, take a breather <laughs> real quick and see if I have anything I need to show you. Nope. So let's go on over to some of the things. So as you know, that the last couple days has uh, been days off for some of the kids, and MCT jumped on a lot of those days off with what's called a play in a day. So school is out and it's time to play MCT is excited for to offer a day long theater camp on most Missoula County public schools no school day students will rehearse and perform a small musical in just one day. And the event happens from 9am to 530pm tonight with a performance around six o'clock. And a lot of times when they do have these MCT children's theater camps, they usually have it a week long, and then they have performances at 4pm at 6pm most nights. So you want to check that out to see what that's all about. I believe it's more of a family centric event. So I don't know if it's completely open to the public. So you'll have to double trouble with the MCT. So Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium open hours at 10 a.m. It's a great way to see some of the uh, creepy crawlies and the bugs and the butterflies here in the city of Missoula. Family fun time. If you're interested in doing some indoor fun as the weather gets a little bit colder, Ms. Mill Roots, Get Air, and YMCA are great examples for some indoor fun. Tiny Tales is here at the Missoula Public Library every Friday at 10.30 a.m. Learn those kids to read, or teach those kids to read. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, lunch at the Missoula Senior Center. It's a great way for seniors to get cheap, nutritious meals and also go to one of the best dance floors in the city of Missoula. Yarns and Watercolor at 12 noon. It's every Friday at noon on the fourth floor of the Missoula Public Library. You can paint with watercolor or you can make your own clothes. It is getting colder out there. You might want to make yourself a new scarf. School's out, uh, big kids season. Clay Sugar Skulls, so if you're interested, they're doing uh, something through uh, MCPS. Uh, this is a part of the uh, $60 per student. Uh, they have a day where school is out. Students uh, aged 9 to 12 can join to create one of the more sensational projects and have great time. And this is uh, at the Clay Studio of Missoula, sorry. And they learn about Dia de los Muertos traditions and create a sugar skull sculpture with Latina teacher Chrissy Ramirez. All Abilities Art Club at 1 p.m. Uh, today and this afternoon for people who are living with disabilities and want to be able to uh, express themselves in this uh, inclusive environment. Um, Lego Club at 2.30 p.m. every Friday at the Missoula Public Library. Usually all kid-centric events here at the library are on the second floor. Home Funeral Workshop, Funk It Coffee and Thrift. In this Home Funeral Workshop, it will be educating participants in home funeral options such as the uh, legals around home funerals in Montana, feelings and emotions around home funerals, the opportunity of housing a home funeral for a loved one, practice shrouding, wrapping, and body forced home funerals, ritual and ceremony around the time of death and dying. So this might be for some of you who 
are looking to find alternative ways to grieve for your loved ones. Makerspace, build your own creativity muscles. Uh, Makerspace is briefly exploring how to creatively work with science and uh, psychology perspective. Then they will experiment with playful, interactive ways to strengthen your creative confidence. They'll be uh, closed with brainstorming ways to bring more creativity into your everyday life. This workshop will be the interest of those who are interested in the makerspace and want to be more creative using the 3D printer and beyond. Uh, from here to the empathy, uh, the MVC weekend retreat, the Jocko River Yurt retreat. There's a uh, re uh, registration is open for this retreat. Uh, continuing education credit available, space limited, blah, blah, blah. All details are on the website. It doesn't seem like it talks too much, but it's mostly about uh, a retreat for people who are tired of guilt, confusion, depression, shame, conflict, and poor communication. And hmm, I don't want to say, but this kind of sounds like a cult. But regardless of that, um, we're going to move on to something that also probably sounds like one. But anyways, they're doing a uh, cacao ceremony at Sacred Alley. They do this uh, most full moons in the city of Missoula, and it starts at 7 p.m. tonight at Sacred Alley. Uh, Alley CVT at the Wilma Theater is playing some electronic music at 7 p.m. A Haunted House is going to be at uh, 11620 Porter Inn um, near Frenchtown. This is a haunted house in Porter Inn. This starts at 7 p.m. Jesse the uh, Cola um, uh, is going to be playing some music at Imagination Brewing Company. Rush Farm is going to be at the Old Post. Uh, Little Shop of Horrors is going to be performed at MCT. And, you know, it's kind of clandestine for me to kind of show the MCT, the uh, um, Little Shop of Horrors original uh, movie. Uh, and this is the Little Shop of Horrors musical, which will be uh, playing this weekend uh, at 7.30 p.m. for evening shows and 2 p.m. for uh, matinee shows. Uh, West Side Theater is doing what's called Kid Lightning. It's a reimagining of what theatrical experience can look like through stylized stage design that weaves narratives in a signature blend of dance, music, and film. LED is an award-winning art uh, organization that weaves signature contemporary choreography, original music compositions, and elements of film into thought-provoking narratives and inspiring stories that are redefining the boundaries of performing arts. <coughs> <coughs> and while all this is going on, the University of Montana Theater Dance is presenting Into the Woods. It is a uh, Stephen Sondheim play, so it's going to be very depressing. And there's going to be a lot of intricacy of language because they do really fun tongue-twisting songs in these kind of uh, plays and whatnot, so you guys can enjoy that. It's going to be playing this weekend and next. Um, get a chance to check that out through the University of Theater and Dance program. Homeboy, Sandman, Wild Robot, Rich Tour. Monsters are going to be playing all those uh, in form of hip-hop starting at 8 p.m. tonight. Heavy Metal Halloween. Uh, this is, oh, yeah, it looks like they're doing some Halloween stuff this weekend, even though next weekend is usually when the big Halloween stuff happens, but we can believe it playing some rock music at Zach. Russ Nassett and the Revelators are going to be at Union Club tonight at 7, 9 p.m. Joe Martinez with special guests playing some country music at Sunrise Saloon tonight at 9.30 p.m. Friday Night Light Skate, so if you're interested in late night skating at Glacier Ice Rink, starts at 10 p.m. tonight. Damn It Lauren is going to be playing some rock music at Top Hat to wrap up your Friday night as we move into Saturday markets and such. We are going to be wrapping up most of our Saturday markets uh, here in the downtown Missoula area by the end of October, so this is by far your last uh, couple weekends before it'll be wrapped completely. Uh, and that usually happens every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. during the summer and uh, early fall season. Um, you and your child, Halloween cupcake decoration at the Lifelong Learning Center. 100% Hand, hands-on class that will get you and your child decorating cupcakes together. And this is through the Lifelong Learning Center. Um, the scavenger Hunt uh, Challenge and Hike. This is going to be at Anarchy uh, 7012 uh, Anarchy Avenue in Bonner. And they're doing a scavenger hunt. Uh, the uh, Hose Shed uh, Glamping Cabins, they're doing a 100-acre property that will take you two-hour-long adventure through the forest and mountains of the property, um, and that's going to be happening starting at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Uh, Makerspace, they have their walk-in hours, so once you've uh, did your education class today, you can go check it out and see how you can fully fulfill your creative endeavors through 3D printing, laser scanning, and more. Youth Financial Empowerment Classes. As we're getting into further into the fall season, there's a lot of uh, federal uh, grants that are being awarded through all these organizations, organizations to teach people about financial management, which includes the Clearwater Credit Union, which uh, goes from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's, it, it's an intensive, but also strategies for successful home ownership, HomeWord. Uh, they're doing a registration. Uh, they start at 10 a.m. as well, and HomeWord presents people with grants to successfully go through these programs to help with the first-time home buyers. 
Orchard Homes Harvest Market. As we get into the closer to the winter time, Orchard Homes will be hosting a uh, harvest market at 10 a.m. and they'll also be continuing the winter market going into the winter sometime in November. Um, story Times, a Community Heroes Story Time series, Firefighters and Food. Missoula Public Library is hosting a talk once a month, Meet Someone of the Public That Keep Us Safe. At 10.30 a.m. this month, the fire department will visit the library, meet firefighters, hear their stories, make some fire-themed treats, and see fire trucks. The special event replaces our usual Saturday story time. The story time is for ages 3 and older and their caregivers. Moon Down Rails Homestead, they have their open hours starting at 11 every Saturday at 11 a.m. Museum tours at the Missouri Museum at 11 a.m. Uh, Growing Orchard Seminar and Repotting, Karis Nursery, is doing a class through the KC and the Five Valley Orchard Society at Karis Nursery. This is uh, repotting starts at twelve dollars and includes four clear plastic pot bark and moss as they'll advertise with the expert. That's at uh, eleven a.m. at Care Care's Nursery, Missoula Health and Wellness Fair at the UC Ballroom on the third floor. This is Health and Wellness Fair's premier place for resources and inspiration to get healthy and fit for a longer life. And that's at eleven a.m. at the UC Ballroom, Western Montana Genealogical S Society Workday at uh, the fourth floor at twelve noon on Saturday, uh, here on the Missoula Public Library. Uh, Fall Family Fest, Parks and Recreation for Missoula Regional Park. Uh, they're doing a, their Fall Family Festival from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Fort Missoula Regional Park. Activities include family fun, games, hay rides, cider pressing, and community partners. And this is all at 1 p.m. on Saturday. And as always, MCAT Saturday drop-ins are from 1 to 3 p.m. every Saturday for you to enjoy. Native Plant Garden Immersion Fall se Session, Montana Natural History Center, Native Plant Garden Immersion, um, they're from 3 to 5 p.m. Certified Natural and Forest Therapy Guide, uh, Skyke, uh, oh, Sky, oh, Skyke, oh, sorry, I'm totally butchering that name. It's, the name is S, uh, the, the name is spelled S-Y-L-K-E, so I, I don't know how to, I would pronounce that, but um, Lane uh, invites us to uh, come to our senses and follow our natural curiosity in the native plant garden, and this is at Fort Missoula Native Plant Garden at 3 p.m. So 15th annual Missoula Tweed Ride. So the uh, Free Cycles of Missoula, they do a tweed ride every year to raise money for Free Cycles. And the 15th annual uh, Missoula Tweed Ride, get, wear your best tweed and go on an annual bike ride starting at 3 p 3.30 p.m. on at Free Cycles. It's on First Street near um, um, Orange Street. So anyways, docu-dining with Osher Life Learning Institute at the University of Montana. So docu-dining, and they're doing a register for MOLLE program. This is a program through the uh, additional education for people who are non-traditional students but want to sign up for one class. This is from uh, 6 to 8 p.m. View the Wonder and the Worry documentary. Listen to an in-person panel discussion on the filmmakers. Enjoy a tasty pizza with your crew. Uh, also, Sacred Alley is doing a speed dating at 7 p.m., so they're doing a cacao ceremony tonight at 7 p.m., and then the next day they're doing a speed dating and relating. So it's speed dating, but they're also having a deeper connection as well. If you're into that, that's at 7 p.m. on Saturday night. Raised by Wolves, Folk and Imagination Brewing Company, playing some music there. Bill uh, Kretz a Quartet uh, is going to be playing some jazz at the Zootown Arts Community Center at 7.30 p.m. The Light Donkey Island Picnic Boner is going to be playing at the VFW, playing some rock music at 8 p.m. on Saturday. Karaoke at Westside Lanes at 9 p.m. Y Uncle Funk Union Club at 9 p.m. Black Sheep Party, Electronic at Monks, Mark Du Bois uh, and Crossroads. You can play some country music at Sunrise Saloon. Chris Moon every Saturday at 10 p.m. at the Badlander playing some DJ music. Ryan Chris and the Rough Cuts is going to be at that top hat playing some country music to wrap up your Saturday at 10.15 on Saturday. Sunday, if you're interested in doing a 50K, mind you, this is the unique trail race starts and finishes near the University of Montana Lewis and Clark Trail near the soccer field. This is uh, over 33 miles culminating in the Paddy Creek watershed. It highlights the best of Missoula icon uh, iconic open space, conservation lands, and recreational area and boasts less than two miles of pavement. Uh, October Speed Puzzling Competition. Draftworks is doing a speed puzzle competition with three teams plus everyone gets their, pu uh, their own puzzle. Ready to prove that you got the fastest hands in Missoula? You can sign up now. Cost is $25 at Draftworks Brewing at on Sunday at noon. Spooky Skate at a great glacier ice rink. They'll be doing a couple of these leading up into the Halloween season, and they're doing a spooky sk skate on Sunday at 12 noon. Great way for you to uh, dress up and skate. Get Lit is gr part of Grow Music uh, at the Missoula Public Library at 1 p.m. I would probably not call it Get Lit, just so you know, because it, it's very much for the kids. But anyways, 
I'm, I'm judging, I'm sorry, but this is a local youth in collaboration with adult musicians, and this is at Windsor Public Library and Grow Music Presents. It's Garden City Salsa. If you're interested, Rocky Mountain Ballet Theater does this on Sundays at 1 p.m. Pumpkin Carving Contest, Missoula Ace Hardware at 2 p.m. on Sunday. Bring a carved pumpkin to display no later than October 21st for a chance to win a $100 gift card to Montana Ace. Community will vote on the winner October 21st through the 31st. And if you're interested in doing Harvest Wreath Workshop, Baron uh, Brewery is doing a wreath making workshop at 3 p.m. on Sunday. Um, pinball tournament at 4 p.m. at Odd Pitch. And then Sunday Night Jazz at the Zach is going to be at 6 p.m. featuring Lauren Stillman. Uh, Blackberry Smoke at the Wilma. Dead Eye Production presents Oriska or uh, Galvanist is going to be at Monks playing some music there at 8 p.m. Then we got Open Mic Comedy at VFW. Rocking Karaoke at Sunrise Saloon to wrap up your Sunday and your weekend events and more. And so I wanted to thank you guys for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Enjoy this fun little uh, short uh, uh, music piece by Josh Cook. <laughs>